What's black and white and red all over? Oh wait, there's some purple too. And is that blue? Yellow, orange, a little pink. Okay, this bird might be the most beautiful rotten meat eater I have ever laid eyes on. This is the King Vulture. Hi, my name is Aranya Iyer, and you're watching Animal Logic's World of Birds. The world's most handsome vulture is also the only surviving species in the genus Sarcorhampus. Before we continue, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode, Monk Pack. Monk Pack offers low sugar, keto friendly bars that are plant based, gluten free, and non GMO. They're the perfect snack for anyone who's trying to eat better or cut back on sugar and carbs without sacrificing taste. Monk Pack's chewy granola bars and keto nut and seed bars contain one gram of sugar or less. 2 to 3 grams of net carbs and about 150 calories. You don't need to be on a keto diet to enjoy Monk Pack bars. I grab a salted caramel bar between my meetings. It's a guilt free snack that gives me an energy boost without the high sugar content of other bars. And best of all, it has that sweet and salty flavor that I love. You can get 20% off your first purchase of any Monk Pack product by visiting monkpack.com and entering code ANIMALLOGIC at checkout. Or you can just click the link in the description down below. You'll get a delicious yet nutritious snack delivered right to your door, and you'll be helping the show. Thanks, Monk Pack! The King Vulture's full scientific name is Sarcorhampus papa. Sarcorhampus is made up of two ancient Greek words. Sarx means flesh, and rhamphus means crooked looking beak. Hmm, fleshy beak? Makes sense. The papa part of its name is Latin for bishop, which is a reference to the vulture's black and white plumage kinda looking like a bishop's cloak. It's unclear though if whoever made that comparison got in a whole lot of trouble afterwards. King vultures belong to the New World vulture family, along with four other vultures and two condors. Although Old World and New World vultures are similar, they're not too closely related. Their similarities are just another case of convergent evolution. The king vulture lives in lowland forests, savannas, and grasslands. You can find them in southern Mexico, Central America, and South America, all the way down to northern Argentina. If you're in that region and want to spot one, your best bet is to hang out in forests, near swamps or marshes. Hot tip, wear a lot of bug spray. There's a couple different theories as to how the vulture got the king part of its common name. The first is that the bird has a habit of kicking other smaller vultures to the curb when it's time to feed on carrion. Scatter away, little peasants. The very important king must eat first. The other guess is that the name is derived from Mayan legends. Mayans thought the bird was a king who served as a messenger between humans and gods. Yet another reason the king vulture might be referred to as a king? Its size. It's one of the biggest birds in the Western Hemisphere and the biggest New World vulture, if you don't count the condors. The vulture stands about 75 centimeters tall and weighs about 5 kilos. Its wingspan can get up to over a staggering 2 meters. You may notice a sort of bulging pinkish appendage on the vulture's chest. And it's not what it looks like, it's actually an internal pouch that's part of the digestive tract. It's called a crop, and lots of birds have them. The crop stores food until it's ready to be digested. When the vulture is full, the crop gets big and bulging. Oh man, my crop is huge, I gotta take a nap. The vulture's wings have the classic gigantic and gorgeous primary feathers. But its whole body, even that a uh, very unique chest feature, is totally boring compared to the king vulture's spectacular bald head. Feast your eyes on that. Red, orange, black, yellow, blue, purple, so many colors. This bird is the most colorful vulture in the world, and this time we're even including every single species of the condor. But no one knows why this bird has this coloration in the first place. 
It's the most baffling rainbow-themed mystery since the leprechaun hit his pot of gold. The king vulture also has a trademark orange fleshy appendage on its beak. Its very fun name? The caruncle. There's a theory that the caruncle may play a role in the bird's mating rituals. The brighter it is, the more healthy and attractive the vulture will appear to its potential mates. The same seems to go for the colorful patches of skin on the king vulture's head. The brighter the patches, the better chance of scoring a partner. King vultures aren't particularly social, but they do live in pairs, and at night they might join other couples and sleep in small groups. They spend their waking hours searching for food, perched on top of the forest canopy, or flying through the skies. Actually, gliding is a better word for what they do, because a king vulture will only flap when it's absolutely necessary. Instead, they rely on air currents to keep them in flight. They can go for hours without any flapping at all. Sounds relaxing. You'd think the king vulture's bright head would make it real obvious to spot in the wild. But it tends to tuck its head down when it's perched in trees, so you're really only seeing the black and white parts of its body. It also does this when it flies. At a distance, you might think you're looking at a headless bird soaring through the sky. You've got some competition, headless horsemen. Although there are some reports of the king vulture killing small animals, they're pretty rare. Nope, this bird's diet is classic scavenger, meaning it consists mostly of carrion. Its favorite snacks include beached fish, dead lizards, and the skin and hard tissue of dead forest animals. Mmm, appetizing. Unlike other New World vulture species, the king vulture doesn't have a great sense of smell. They tend to rely on other vultures to sniff at the carrion. Then they swoop in and join in the feeding. But what the king vulture lacks in smell, it makes up for in pure beak strength. The vulture has the strongest beak out of all American vultures. It has the power to open up large animal carcasses that other vultures can't even pierce. This is why the king gets first dibs on delicious carrion and the other vultures are left with just scraps. So the king vulture needs the smaller vultures' sense of smell to lead it to food. But the smaller vultures need the king vulture to tear up the food. Sounds like a mutually beneficial relationship. After feeding, sometimes the vulture will fly long distances to a watering hole or river so they can wash off the carrion, get clean, and preen. Wow, they sound like they take hygiene pretty seriously. Well, mostly. They do poop on their own legs to cool down in the heat. This process is called urohydrosis, and we recommend you don't try this at home. Like all scavengers, the vulture plays an important role in the ecosystem. By eating the rotting remains of an animal soon after its death, it helps keep their habitat free of dead and decomposing animals, which could otherwise cause diseases. Despite its size and beak strength, the king vulture isn't an aggressive bird. They don't even have voice boxes. Instead, when they're feeling threatened, they make noise by clapping their bills. And there are threats. The king vulture's predators include snakes and big cats, like jaguars, who may surprise and kill the bird when it's feeding on a carcass. The king vulture is monogamous and partners for life. They mate during the dry season and their courtship ritual is quite the elaborate dance. Both the male and the female flap their wings while walking on the ground in circles. During the actual mating, there is a lot of loud wheezing and snorting sounds. But hey, if it works for you, who am I to judge? The female produces one egg at a time, which both parents incubate in their nest. The trick is to keep that nest extra stinky to ward off potential predators. After two months, a little baby will hatch, with its eyes open and a layer of downy feathers. Baby king vultures are altricial, which means both the mom and the dad must take turns incubating, feeding, and defending their chick. The parents bring food to them in their claws, but often feed via regurgitation. Perfect time to use that gorgeous crop. 
the little prince vulture will spend most of its first four years learning to hunt and fly with mom and dad, until it becomes fully mature at around four years old. No one's sure how long king vultures can live in the wild, but in captivity, they can live up to 40 years. Although they're currently listed as a species of least concern, the vultures' numbers are decreasing, mainly due to habitat destruction and poaching. We know we say this every time we talk about tropical animals, but that's because they're all being affected by the same few environmental pressures. Hopefully, as we continue learning about fascinating creatures like this king vulture, we continue to be reminded of the stunning royal beauty is worth fighting for. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Keep soaring to new heights. I'll see you later. Bye.